Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by our channel. My name is Alan Leistico and I am the youth pastor for Core Student Ministries. I am so honored and thankful that you have checked out our YouTube channel because here at Core Student Ministries, we are deeply passionate about creating digital content that helps you stay connected to your church, to your youth group, and most importantly, to Jesus. And if you could do me a quick favor, can you hit the subscribe button for us down below? Can you also click that little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we upload a video and every time we go live for Wednesday night youth worship? And lastly, can you put a comment down below and just letting us know how we can pray for you because we care deeply and passionately about your faith journey and your spiritual well-being. Now let's jump over to our video for today. Need help. There's gonna be a picture up here of someone famous. Hey guys, hey, hey. A picture. All right, so Tom Holland. That's not what I need help with, though. Clap once if you hear my voice. Clap twice if you hear my voice. Clap three times if you can hear my voice. This is what I need help with. All right, I'm a total noob. I don't know any of this stuff. What does that weird check mark next to his name mean? What is that? Verified. That's exactly right. Now, we understand that that check mark is important, right? Like, if he doesn't have that check mark, like the other two that you see there, how, how, do we, how do we know that it's really Tom Holland? How can we trust that, you know, that weird tuxedo guy, Tom Holland, is not the actual real Tom Holland? His post, how can we trust that his post is real, though? The check mark, yeah, the check mark helps to give us trust in what they're posting. Now, here's the thing. There isn't just famous actors that are verified, or athletes, companies like Apple or Microsoft. As you know, there are also some very famous adventurers, or what we like to call as hikers. See, way, way back in the day, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, no, I'm kidding, but a long time ago, when, when movies and TV was starting to really take off, there was a very famous uh, uh, comedy duo named Abbott and Costello, all right? Abbott and Costello were adventurers. They traveled all over the world doing crazy adventures, but here's the thing, it was all about comedy, but... But, in the 1980s, there was one man who changed adventuring forever. Exactly. No, not Beetlejuice. It was Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones changed the adventure genre forever. Because, you see, again, up to that point, things like, or uh, movies and shows like Abbott and Costello, they were really more focused on, you know, the, the comedy side. You know, throwing pies at each other, running from a mummy, all that sort of stuff. But Indiana Jones, he did something that no one else did. He turned adventuring into an action genre, all right? He was a, a professor of archaeology. He traveled the world going on all these crazy adventures. But here's the truth. As Indiana Jones made all of his travels, he had to have a lot of trust, he had to trust that the guide that he had, whoever it may be in that specific movie, knew what they were doing. He had to trust that his equipment was going to work. You know, that famous lasso, that, or not lasso, the whip. He had, to, he had to trust that his training would help him in his adventures. And I think the most important thing of all, he had to trust himself. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Advent, uh, Indiana Jones, but there's this one famous scene yeah, the boulder. There's one famous scene where he's trying to take this bag off of, off of a pedestal. Now, he knows it's booby-trapped. It was, uh, what is it called? He had to replace it with the bag. 
Oh, that's right. Yes, because it was the Holy Grail. It was the Holy Grail. It was the chalice of the Holy Grail. It's a cup. And so he had to be able to move the cup off the pedestal and put the bag on it. So. Oh. Okay. Regardless, whoever, whatever it was, <laughs> yeah, whatever, the, whatever the object was, the truth is he had to trust himself. He had to trust that as he stood there, he could move fast enough so that he wouldn't get hurt or killed. I want to ask all of you guys a couple of questions. And this is a poll. It's on a scale, all right? On a scale of one to five. So one being poor and five being perfect. All you need to do is raise your hand and let me know what number you fall in. So the first question is, on a scale of one to five, how trustworthy are you? How trustworthy are you? Jake. A four? All right. Katie? Five. Oh, you outbeat Jake. Good. A two? Wow. Point one. That's self-deprecating. A five. Good for you. Okay, three and a half. Three? Five? Three? Okay, okay, don't worry. I have a few more questions to ask you. On a scale of one to five, one being poor, five being perfect, how easily do you trust others? How easily do you trust others? Yes, ma'am. Negative zero. Three. Four. Zero depending on the person. One. Zero point five. Wow, that's a pretty small trust. Depending on the person. Three point nine. That's pretty precise. That's pretty precise. Don't worry, I have a few more questions I want to ask you. Don't worry, don't worry. As you're going out to eat with your friends, on a scale of one to five, one being poor, one five being perfect, how much do you trust the food at fast food restaurants. <laughs> that was fast. None. You don't trust the food. Five. Oh, you do trust the food. The exact opposite. Four? Four? Okay. Zero. Food is food. Yes, ma'am. One and a half? Okay, that's fair. About a two. All right, hold on. I got, got a couple more questions. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got a couple more questions. This is kind of a goofy one, because I don't know if all of you guys use these or even travel over them, but on a scale of one to five, one being poor, five being perfect, how much do you trust things like ladders or bridges or plastic chairs, especially those plastic chairs that are like set outside in the sun for like 10 years? Okay, but that's not, that's not what we're talking about. Are we talking about right after the manufacturing? I just says plastic chairs. Oh, you trust all those things. Okay, interesting. I'm going to come over here, because I, 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 I got a lot of you guys. I'm going to come over here. Yeah. 11, you really trust. All right. Three, six. All right, I said one to five, but okay. Negative one. Yes, sir. You go home when you're dead. Yes, Liam. 17. Now, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one, especially given what's going on in our world right now. But on a scale of one to five, how much do you trust famous people? How much do you trust famous people? No. So zero. One. Three. All right. Not at all. Zero. Five hundred. Negative five. All right. How much do you trust famous people? Okay, you don't know him. That's a good answer. Only Johnny Depp. Don't. <laughs> All right, here's the last question, and probably the most difficult one. On a scale of one to five, one being poor, five being perfect, how trustworthy are your friends? How trustworthy are your friends? I'm going to get everybody on this one. I'm going to get everybody on this one. Yes, sir. 10%. 10. Okay, He's 10. 100. 100 is out. All right. Like that, that. All right. Oh, bummer. Okay. Okay, depends. I, I get that. I, 
Ouch, harsh. Okay. A five. Five. Ten. Four. Four. Five. 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 Ten. Negative. Ouch. Macy. Five. Depends on the friend. Depends on the friend. Well, I'm pretty sure, based on, on all of you guys' answers, nice. clap once if you can hear my voice, clap twice if you can hear my voice. So based on your answers, I'm pretty sure that we're kind of 50-50. Like, some of us, we can trust people, and others, we don't trust people at all. Now, guys, I, I, I kind of get that, all right? I sympathize with struggling to trust people. When I, uh, when I graduated high school, I got my first, first part-time job. It was at Blockbuster Video. Now, this is a company that went bankrupt a long time ago, before you guys were even, many of you were even born. But Blockbuster Video was a big deal when I was a kid. All right? Because you see, when you were sick, or if you did something good at school, or in your extracurricular, it, mom and dad would take you out to Blockbuster, and you could rent a movie that you wanted to watch, or even a, a video game. Well, here's the thing. When I started working at Blockbuster, about a year later, one of my old classmates got hired. And I kid you not, this boy never showed up for work on time. Sometimes it was just a couple minutes late. Other times it would be like 30 or 40 minutes late. Now, this lasted for probably a good year. I I'm surprised he kept his job that long. I don't know why he didn't get fired. But let me tell you, Friday night at Blockbuster for an employee was miserable. Right, because that's where everybody went. You would go to Blockbuster to get your, your, your anticipated movie or video game. Well, the employees are working like double time, all right? So from like right around 6, 6 to about 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9.30-ish, it was nonstop work. I mean, you did not stop. And so if you go in on a Friday and you're opening up the store at about 10 o'clock and, and you have to work all day, and then Brandon comes in and he's late, man, let me tell you, you quickly lose trust in him. You quickly lose respect for him. And, and, and it got so bad that we started doing his work before he got there because we never could trust he would actually show up or actually do his job. I mean, trust is a hard thing to have. You know, I think that's kind of what the disciples struggled with as Jesus died on the cross. I mean, you got to think about this. All right? Think about this for a second. got to think about this. All right. The disciples spent three years with Jesus. He, he was saying all these great things. They believed in him, and now, boom, he's dead. And that was absolutely terrible for the disciples. I mean, this guy was their spiritual leader. All right? He was the one who helped them to become who they were, and now, all of a sudden, he's just not there. So who's going to lead them now? I mean, since Jesus is dead, can everything he said about God be untrustworthy? Now that he's gone, what are they going to do? Now, I need you guys to understand that these disciples, they were incredibly disappointed. They were disappointed that life wasn't turning out the way they wanted it to be. They were grieving because their closest friend, they just watched getting murdered. But at the same time, they were terrified. They were terrified because the very people who killed Jesus could also be coming after them. So tonight I want to open up and I want to read to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. So listen to God's word. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his, his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am now sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. 
If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus arrived. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. Well, about a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. Then Jesus told them, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Well, Thomas didn't really believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. I mean, why, why should he? That's kind of a, a crazy thing to believe. You, you, need to, you need to understand something. In Thomas's day, right, it was very common to witness crucifixion. So Thomas under, understood that there is absolutely no way that someone could survive this horrific death. And when, when, when there was nail marks in his hands and in his, in his ankle and the stab mark in his side, there's no way that someone could instantly heal from that. So, of course, Thomas is doubting. And wouldn't you? If I died today and someone in this youth group said that I'm alive, would you believe that? <laughs> okay, I'm glad you believe that. But most people would not. And it's, it's understandable. But you got to think, again, those nails that nailed him to the cross, they're like six or seven inches long. And they got a diameter about that big. All right, so that going into your hand, that's not making a small hole. That's making a real big hole. There's no way that's going to heal up. But you see, before all this was happening, before Jesus showed up, before he was announcing himself to the other disciples, I am almost certain that Thomas... He probably felt betrayed. He had spent three years following this guy. He spent three years believing that he was the the Messiah. So he probably felt betrayed that this guy is now dead. I'm sure he also felt lost. I mean, how could you not feel lost? Your leader, your best friend, the guy who you believe is going to change the world is now gone. Like, of course you're going to be lost. And I'm sure he also felt really foolish. How could I believe that this man was the Messiah? He's just yet another false Messiah. And of course, Thomas probably felt devastated. He was probably hurting at the fact that Jesus is dead. And he's not coming back. Or at least that's what he thought. See, Thomas trusted Jesus when he was alive because he could see Jesus. He could interact with Jesus. Thomas wondered if he had misplaced his trust in Jesus when he died. But something changed. Something happened to Thomas when he finally witnessed Jesus' resurrection. He believed him more than he had ever believed in his entire life. Because he could see Jesus. He could witness to what happened to him. Now, there's another guy in the, in the, in the Bible that, that really understood what it meant to trust God. His name's King, uh, King Solomon. Right? He is the son to King David. And we basically assume that King Solomon is the wealthiest and most successful king that Israel had ever had. But you see, Solomon was born hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was even alive, or at least here on earth. So he never got to see Jesus. He never got to see the miracles. He never got to see the the crucifixion or the resurrection. But regardless of any of that, Solomon still trusted God. I want to end tonight 
by reading to you from the book of Psalms, or book of Proverbs, sorry. I'm in, in chapter 3. I want to read to you verses 5 and 6. Listen to God's word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. See, King Solomon is, is trying to help us understand that by trusting God, we can in turn trust Jesus because Jesus comes from God. God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. And even though Solomon never even saw him, Solomon trusted Jesus. But I think for you guys, and for really all teenagers, this is probably one of the most difficult parts of your faith. How can you trust someone you've never met? Jesus doesn't have that little blue check mark next to his name. He's not verified, although he very much is verified with the cross. But how can we truly trust that Jesus is who he says he is? Well, guys, when I first went to seminary in 2011, when I was first called into ministry, I thought that I was being called to be a senior pastor someday, to be ordained as an elder. All right? But I struggled with it because I struggled to trust God. Not that I, I, I didn't trust God's calling, but I struggled to trust that God would show up. And for the past 10 plus years, I have battled with that calling. Because I've always been scared that is God going to show up to take care of my needs? Someday when I become a, a senior pastor and I'm leading an entire church and there's a problem at the church, I struggle, is God going to show up and help me through it? Now, I'm also in ministry, so I don't make very much money. So if Natalie gets sick or if Junia gets hurt, can I trust that God's going to show up to take care of them? Or... Is God going to show up and help me take care of Junia so she can go off to college? God's going to help me. And while I struggled with trusting God, let me tell you, when you experience God for that first time, things change, just like with Thomas. A few weeks ago, I was really, really wrestling with this. In fact, I was sitting right where Nicholas is sitting. And I was standing, uh, sitting there watching Pastor Steve stand right here on a Sunday morning preaching. I kept looking at the cross. I kept getting drawn to the cross again. I just felt something. Something was changing in me. At the end of worship, I went up to the altar rail and I started praying. And an adult congregational member came up and he prayed over me. And it was in that moment that I knew I could trust God because God showed up. Whatever it is that you're going through in your life, Wherever you are in your faith right now, whether you don't believe at all and you are simply here because your friends are here or your boyfriend or girlfriend's here, let me tell you, God is showing up in your life right now. Because the truth is, you didn't come here by accident. You didn't come here because your friend brought you here. You didn't come here because your boyfriend or your girlfriend brought you here. You didn't come here because mom and dad forced you to be here. You came here because God brought you here. God knows you need to be here. And by that very cross, you can trust that Jesus says who he says he is. Because he truly died on that cross and three days later was raised to new life. When we trust Jesus, we are raised to new life. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that even in our distrust, as we sit here and totally ignore the words that are coming out of my mouth because we don't believe, you still sit there fighting for us. You stand there waiting with your arms extended saying, please come touch the holes in my hands. Put your hand in my side and believe. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Yeah, we pray for those who are struggling tonight. 
who are struggling to behave appropriately and respect the space and respect the adult volunteers and respect you, respect me, respect each other, respect the bands. It is by your power that we forgive them, that we ask you to forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. They are young, they're immature. So God, invade their lives. Help them to see you for the first time. Help to transform them so that when they come back next week, they're different. They're different because they've experienced you because they want to be in a relationship with you. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hey guys, thanks for checking out our video today. Up on your screen is going to be a link to, to our channel so that you can go and check out other content that we have created for you. And also there is going to be a link to a video that YouTube thinks that you want to watch next. Now, if that's not the video you want to watch next, again, I highly encourage you to go over to our channel and check out our various playlists that we have because something in those videos might be what you need right now. Again, thank you so much for checking us out and we'll see you in the next, next video. Bye.